someone that I had heard of because of a story on uh, on Superfolder Central <laughs> was uh, Dirge, and all there was was a was a name drop. In, oh in the gosh, script. Dirge! I, I had Woo! no idea who Dirge was. Oh, I was like, Dirge. That, sound, that sounds familiar because of the story that somebody had written, and so I He's googled pretty... it, and it's like, holy cow, this dude is insane. Dirge was a beast. Like he's he's li- he lived for like two thousand years. He he yes. killed all kinds of Jedi and stuff. And yeah, that's man, the reason really his name was dropped in the book is because it was Anakin was thinking about uh, Grievous, and he's like he's the most famous Jedi slaughterer since Dirge. He only now, I, what exactly is Dirge? Dirge was a bounty hunter <laughs> who Gendai. Gen- so like yeah, Gendai up. bounty hunter who uh, specifically kind of targeted Jedi, and he worked with the Separatists during the Clone Wars. He's sort of, in a far more extreme case, he's like the equivalent of Cad Bane in canon, but Dirge okay. was not at all like Cad Bane, aside from like the Bounty Hunter aspect. He was yeah. just this beast who could not be stopped. And if you... If you killed him, his species had this thing where, he, like, he was made up of, like, tendrils. And if if you cut off his arm, for instance, the tendrils would just, like, regrow and put himself back together. Sort of like Deadpool, I guess. Um, and, and the way and, that I, I was reading it, uh, the only way that he, hen- he ended up dying uh, was Anakin force-pushed him into a star. That yeah, was the only way to kill Anakin him. dropped him into a sun. <laughs> it Sounds like pretty... another example of an OP Legends character. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's what's neat about Dirge, and I mean, I know this is a little bit of a tangent, but I mean, one thing that's great about Dirge is he, without Dirge, there would be no Cad Bane. Because originally, Dave Filoni was like, uh, we need a bounty hunter to end season one and kick off season two. Um, let's bring Dirge back. But then they were having trouble animating Dirge with all these tendrils and everything. Then they're like, let's take that away, just use the armor. And then they're like, if we're gonna take away his coolest aspect anyway, let's just make someone new. And so they made Cad Bane as a result of not using Dirge specifically. We need more Cad Bane stuff in new canon. Oh, we We do. I want him to be in Bad Batch so bad. That would be nice. Bad Batch is literally just a continuation of the Clone Wars. Like, I finally watched that trailer. I'm like, this this is just Clone Wars 8. This yeah. is Clone Wars 8 following different characters, but it's literally also, like, following all the other characters from the Clone Wars. Yep. Yeah, my theory so is, it's like, is off topic, sounds but so good. still. Uh, my theory for Bad Batch, I'll just get it out of the way real quick, uh, is that they're going to do a full 180 on us and the bad batch aren't going to get their chips removed and the series is going to be them hunting down jedi that'd be great that'd, that'd be, be so sick cool. and um there's some some current canon things that could hint towards that possibility but we'll have to wait and see but i'm i'm really excited for the bad batch and everything it entails and especially star squadron the- right yeah, yeah, Scar Squad. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I I feel like they're it's so likely because the characters all share such a resemblance and they have the same skill sets and they mention that their leader is not part of their group anymore, whether he's dead or he's you know turned to the good side or whatever. You know, we just know that their leader is otherwise disposed, and that's why um their current leader guy with the the stormtrooper with the lightsaber uh is in charge. So I'm like, hmm, it seems highly likely that we might just lose Hunter and then do a time jump. Um, I, hey, this is something interesting. Um, Scar Squadron, if you search it in in Wikipedia, if you search Scar Squadron, it redirects to Task Force 99. Yep. I love that. It seems so likely. It's like, it's. It's not even just a coincidence. And what's great about it is it wasn't intended to be a that's what happens to them type of situation. It was, well, shoot, it got canceled. 
And it was like, hey, since they got canceled, uh, hey, Dave, can we just take these characters and do a different era thing and just use your general idea, but do something completely different? He's like, sure, we're not making new Clone Wars anytime soon. And then it's like, well, shoot, we made new Clone Wars and Scar Squadron canon. Well, crud, I guess we have to do something about that. Yeah, behind the scenes, Task Force 99 was named after Clone Force 99, also known as the Bad Batch. Both squads were comprised of members, of which each had a specialization, making them distinct to others in their particular core. This pretty much, like, they, they're the same thing. They've gotta be. If they don't become Scar Squadron, then honestly, that's just a, f- a flaw on their part. Because it's, it's too obvious that, that they knew they, weren't, they were so certain that they weren't going to use the Bad Batch in canon from that point forward. And so they went, well, we still really like this idea of this really unique squad of stormtroopers. Why don't we put them in the Star Wars comic? And so they did that. And then they went back and they're like, well, we have these half-finished episodes that we can just slap a bit more a bit of more money onto and just send them out as the first four episodes of the season before we get to the Mandalore stuff. So we'll just do that. I just want uh, Clone Wars-style Stormtroopers again. That, that shot from the end of the uh, finale was great. I just want more of that. That could happen. Yeah, the Bad Batch isn't tied down to the Clone War era. You know, like, they, I mean, we saw that, you know, uh, Clone Wars was able to make the jump of, what, three, it filled in three years with one show, and then Rebels filled in five years with one show. I wouldn't be surprised if Bad Batch was willing to really force it out more and have it be, you know, oh, um, they've been doing these long missions for these long amounts of time and you know we did a time jump here or there i don't know i could really see them doing something neat with that and it you know there's other neat things you can bring up like topic wise that way of course the transition from you know the first new stormtroopers you know what does the imperial 501st look like in canon which is which would be so amazing after everything with the original battlefront too but um you know, it'd be great to see the age acceleration, too. I think we're getting a bit off track here. Um, but yes, uh, how do we get started talking about this? Was this? Yeah, it was Dirge. Yeah, it was because of Dirge. It's always because of Dirge. Hashtag blame Dirge. From concept art we've seen of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, I haven't seen it, but um, it's been described. Um, Obi-Wan and uh, they either appear to maybe have some kind of a dual Nero Wather based entity, so I'm curious about that. But um, I know they're definitely going to have a Wather planet in the Obi-Wan show that they... It makes me so sad that like Obi-Wan, who loves water... Spends the rest of his life on a sand planet. <laughs> that'll be cool though. If um, that'll be cool though. If uh, Anakin and Obi Wan's next duel is on a water planet because their yeah. other their first duel was on like a a fire planet, like there's yeah. lava everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that that's why Rise of Skywalker did the water thing too. They said they wanted to draw those parallels, um, between. They wanted to draw parallels between the two final duels of the other trilogies, so it's well, not only the Death Star 2, but it's crap. Kind of if it was like that, then you have the three, like, all three of Anakin and Obi-Wan's duels are upon the three tent poles of the universe. You have Mustafar, which is the dark side incarnate, pretty much. There's fire, there's death all around. And it just, it's just anger. And then their second duel could be on this water planet, which is like the very opposite of Mustafar. So it's the light side where everything is serene. Water flows, like Obi-Wan describes it, water flows like the force in that nothing can really contain it. You can only flow with it. And then you have their final duel in this 
monst- monstrosity of technology, which is like the third, uh, I'd venture to say it is the third major faction of Star Wars in that it can contr- it can almost bend the force to its will in Vader. And so you have a fight with the dark side, fight with the light side, and a fight with technology. And all three of them are intrinsic to the relationship between Vader and Obi-Wan throughout their whole lives. Yeah. I like that. It's going to be so cool to see what they do with, with this. This show could be like... I mean, one of the best things to come out of Star Wars since Revenge of the Sith, and I'm just... I'm so excited for Kenobi. <laughs> I know, and it'd be, you know, taking into account these things, I mean, imagine if they, you know, I, I think I mentioned it last time, if they got Matthew Stover the right for it, or if, you know, I know that's not the case, I know they already hired on a writer and everything, but I'm just kind of like, how great would it be to just have, like, those, like, I don't those know, Those connections like, explored. Like yeah. yeah, like Obi Wan and how he sees the Force. That wouldn't be hard to adapt. That reminds me. Out of curiosity, have any of you guys actually um, bothered to play the VR Vader Immortal? I have not. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be uh, buying it this year, but I've watched all the playthroughs and stuff. Yeah, VR makes uh, me sick. Yeah, it does me too on certain occasions, but it explains why Mustafar is a lava planet. Oh right, that was. Oh crazy. yeah, I yeah we've heard I've heard that story. It's yeah, so, it's some, really cool. Some sort we can... of device that warps the force surrounding the planet and basically taints the entire planet. Yeah, and we can. I think that'll be really interesting to get into. In some what if the lines? water planet that they're fighting on is Octo? Huh. Oh. That would be great. Like, the two like polar opposites of light. You have, the, you have the foundation of the dark side and the creation of the light side. That'd be I awesome. Like Kenobi should stay cool. on Tatooine, though, if that makes sense. Well, well yeah. Well, I- hey, what if Obi-Wan... Uh, Ventures Project off himself of like Luke Skywalker because that was no. everybody's favorite scene in the last Jedi. No, not right, projecting. Kid? But I mean, what if Kenobi in his uh, in his quest to like <laughs> find Qui Gon and learn how to uh, like give himself to the Force, mm-hmm. he ventures to like the wellspring of the Jedi, and mm. uh, that's where Vader trails him to, and that's how Luke knows where it is in. Uh, in the last Jedi, because he he followed uh, like Obi Wan's writings, right? Uh, maybe Vader the is attractive. That would be kind of cool. What I'm gonna okay. do, I'm gonna take our conversations about this and the Bad Batch. I'm gonna cut them out of this episode, and I'm gonna put them into their own like bonus thing. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Well, then, yeah, that that helps to <laughs> shorten this episode because it is. Yeah, this is going to be a longer long. recording. Yeah, okay. and we, we, our speculation on the other shows aren't really connected to the book, but I think they're yeah. interesting. That is so very I'm, fair. I'm going to keep them. Okay, so okay. I so guess Obi Wan, Anakin, anything else? Maybe Vader. Ooh, I guess really we can go. We move on. Oh yes. Maybe Vader is attracted to Oxto in search of that well of the dark side of the Force that Ray stumbles into in the Last Jedi. Ooh. Because it's this haven of the dark side that is like, Luke is like, stay away from there. We don't go in there. Just like the cave on Dagobah. What if like Vader is either attracted to like a magnet or is told to go there? Well, he could easily be trying to find more. You know, Mustafar didn't work to save Padme and bring her back from the dead. So why not try every other dark side wellspring? Oh, it's already... so cool to see another scene like uh, in the Last Jedi where Rey was like billions of different images, but with what Vader. if there was a fight in the Dark Side Wellspring? Oh, that Ooh. would be wild. That would be cool. I mean, it'd be that great. Would be to so see trippy, Vader. but I would love it. Yes, and Vader seeing himself, and um, I mean, <laughs> it'd be weird because it could Why almost. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> I was gonna say if you play with it visually. 
and you have a duel, but both duelists are reflected, it could look like an army of Jedi and Sith, but it's just Obi Wan and Vader. Which kind of like when you have incidentally in a mirror room. Which incidentally, Obi Wan and Vader are practically the very images of the light side and the dark side. Yeah, and they're mirror images of each other in this book. I mean, Anakin oh. and Obi Wan are. <laughs> Holy crap, that would be so amazing. That would be awesome. 